Hey folks, I've got another 3D scanner to try out. This is the Revelpoint Pop 3, and it is indeed the third iteration of their Pop 3D scanner, and they very kindly sent it to me to give it a try. I'm getting ready for Monster Palooza in June, which is a really cool convention here in LA where artists bring some just really amazing horror, sci-fi, and classic monster art. I've got a table this year, and I'm gonna have some animatronics to show and some big and small versions of the Vincent Price bust that I did in a previous video. And I thought it would be fun to take something else that I've sculpted in the past and make a bust version of it. So I sculpted this Werewolf of London mask for Trick or Treat Studios a while back. It's based on the Universal Studios movie with Henry Hull, who starred as the very first Universal werewolf before Lon Chaney Jr.'s Wolfman. I have this original casting out of the master mold that I made. This would have been one of the first pulls that I made out of that mold, and I thought this was actually gonna be the official prototype one. And it's foam filled, but uh, the foam didn't quite fill out his cheeks all the way, and this ear got a little messed up, so I set this one aside and made a new one for the actual prototypes, but I've had it laying around and I kind of keep moving it from shelf to shelf until I figure out what I want to do with it. So I thought that would be a great candidate for 3D scanning. So what I want to do is scan that foam filled mask with the POP3 and then I'm going to take it into ZBrush and add some hair and a scarf and print it out at a small scale so that it can be just a little kind of collectible size. Revopoint makes a few different scanners for different sized objects and different levels of detail. So they have the Mini, which has a very small field of view, but it also can pick up very fine detail compared to the Range, which has a large field of view, but much softer detail. And the Pop series is that kind of middle ground where it can see about that big of a space at a time. And the detail is somewhere in the middle. For someone who's interested in scanning a variety of different types of objects, this could be an interesting option. And I've tried out those other scanners too, so if you're interested in kind of seeing what's what about the different choices from Revelpoint, you can go back and check out those videos too. Um, but I'm expecting this to be sort of a middle ground. From what I can see, they have most uh, noticeably added a white light to the RGB camera for scanning textures. Now, this is gonna be my explanation as an artist's perspective looking in on this, not a technical person, really. There's the infrared light that is projected and bouncing back to the two infrared cameras. And that's what's determining the three-dimensional geometry. And then you have the color camera, the RGB, that is capturing the surface colors. And by adding some lights next to that camera, it's hopefully going to be able to capture a more consistent, smooth finish because otherwise you're dependent entirely on the lighting in the room. So that's a cool update. And I don't have the POP2, but I do have the POP1, and I scanned my pirate mask with that in a video a while back, and I think that this is going to have much sharper detail than that version did. So let's uh, get into it with my Werewolf of London. Before I started the scan, I decided to fix the sunken cheeks by stuffing some plastic bags in there. I think it's important to remember that even though this is something that you could fix in the computer, uh, sometimes fixing something digitally isn't the best or the easiest way to go about it. One thing that's really nice about the POP3 is that they've included buttons to change the scanner exposure right onto the back of the scanner itself, next to the start and stop button. There are also some sort of capacitive touch buttons, so you don't actually have to depress it, you just place your finger on it, and this little ring lights up to let you know that you've actually clicked it. They also include this little turntable that you have to snap together in the box. It runs off of USB, and it has a little dial to control the speed on it. It's hard to adjust that dial um, once the top of it is on, so it may take some experimenting to figure out what speed works best for the object that you're scanning. 
I was originally going to scan this mask on the turntable, but I had a hard time getting a full scan without the tracking getting offset that way. It's probably because the back of the head is really smooth and it doesn't have a lot of surface detail for the scanner to latch onto. So the scan tends to get lost and shift in the back there. And then when it comes all the way back around, it's not lined up. So what I ended up doing was just manually turning it as needed. Um, I still find it easier for me to stay in one place and have the object move instead of walking all the way around the thing. I didn't use the color scanning because it takes longer to process, but I did do another color scan that I'll show later in the video. I will say that RevoScan 5 has changed a lot since I first tried it out a couple months ago, and I expect to see it continue to improve. One of the things that I've learned about RevoPoint is that they are always updating their software and it seems to get better every time. There are new automatic functions and it seems overall a little easier to use. Once I figured out my workflow, this scanned pretty well. There's a real trick to figuring out the sequence that you need to scan something in in order to give it the best chance of success. I stuck with the automatic settings for processing this since I don't fully understand all of the options, and I think I got something pretty good in the end. It has some noise all over, which could be softened out in the manual mesh options, but I like to do that in ZBrush where I'm gonna be doing the rest of my edits. This is what the scan looked like without any edits. I sculpted some hair and eyebrows, his little soul patch, and then added a base. I didn't do much to the scan itself except to fill in the holes, soften the noise, and increase the contrast a bit to bring back the softened detail. I smoothed out that crinkled ear and cleaned up the teeth a little bit. And I always put new eyeballs in to a scanned head because the computer is gonna make some perfectly round spheres. I scaled it to about the same size as my little Vincent Price and I printed it in resin on my Elegoo Saturn. Here it is after a little primer to make it easier to see the surface detail. I think it turned out nicely. Now, admittedly, scaling something down is a much easier ask of any scanner than scaling something up or even keeping it life-size because every scanner that I've ever seen, even the really expensive ones, are going to lose detail from the original. And every scanner has a learning curve, so I can't fault it for that. Now I'm fortunate that I do have a small collection of 3D scanners at this point, but if I only had one and I was planning on scanning a lot of things that were you know, this size or a little bit larger, I think this would be a good option. I probably wouldn't recommend it for somebody who was going to be scanning a lot of like small action figures or a lot of really big like couch sized things. But if you're going to be doing you know, mostly things in the middle and you wanted to sometimes do something a little bit smaller than it's ideal for or a little bigger than it's ideal for, I think you could get away with it and just know that you may end up having to do some extra work in either stitching together multiple scans or re-detailing um, a smaller scan. Now I wish it had better detail, but I find myself saying that with every scanner I've ever seen. Um, I think that's just the reality of 3D scanners right now is they're not quite to the level that we'd like to imagine them at. And I believe this is a pre-production model. So I don't know if any features are gonna change. I don't know what the price is yet, um, but I think this is a good addition to the lineup as a general purpose 3D scanner. For me, the color scanning is kind of a nice to have feature, but for the most part, it's not necessary. Um, because I'm gonna be printing something and then painting it. But I do wanna show you the very first scan that I did when I got the POP3, which was a scan of my own face. You can turn off the white lights by clicking in the settings next to the RGB camera in RevoScan so that you don't have them flashing in your eyes. I was seated in front of a window with diffused light coming in, so this turned out pretty good. Here it is with and without texture. I wanna thank RevelPoint for sending me their POP3 3D scanner. I'm really happy to have this as an addition to my lineup. And I'm gonna be making a few more of these little werewolves of London for Monster Palooza in June. So if you're going to be in Pasadena, stop by and say hello. And now I've gotta get back to working on my animatronic parrot kit. 
and I'm sure I'll have an update on that soon. And of course, you're more than welcome to subscribe if you'd like to see more projects from me.